What's the matter, Spencer? Nothing in particular. The scrotum hangeth low. And you don't look happy. I bet you got the sad. Seasonal effect disorder. Seasons are changing. Less sunlight, it bumps some people out. <laughs> Twitch McGillicuddy, street psychologist. Physician, heal thyself. You gonna be all right for this gig? You look a bit jumpier than usual today. I'm fine. <clears throat> so all I gotta do is drive this thing to San Francisco and uh, bring back a sack of dough, huh? Yeah. You think you can handle it? Of course I can handle it. What is that thing anyway? Fertility goddess. Very rare, very expensive. You're going to see a collector out there. Here's the address. By the way, she puts a curse on anybody who drops her. <clears throat> Ugly little witch. Nasty eyes. Fat. Yeah, you two don't have to get along, okay? Just make sure she gets out there. And keep in touch, will ya? I got all my cash tied up in that thing. I'll call you. Fuck, Lewis. Sorry to uh, disturb you, Spencer, but... But what? Here, come in before the neighbors see you. They're always going on about me lowering property values and such. No need to give them more ammo. I don't come off any worse than you. Precisely. I'm making coffee. Would you like some? Yeah. Okay. So... What's the rice going for? Well, uh, that's what I was coming to explain. Mort's got me on the job. <laughs> Mort Monroe's got you working for him. Mm -hmm. You're kidding. Why in heaven would he do that? Well, uh, I run up a little tab betting on football, and Mort figures since I'm between jobs. Translation, terminally unemployable. Anyway, Mort stuck this piece in my waistband, admonished me not to blow my own dick off with it. Sent me out to collect. Collect? You? That's it. Um, no offense, Lewis, but intimidation's not your strong suit. Nevertheless, I am now designated debt collector for ugly old Mort Monroe. You got that part right. He ain't no pretty boy. Granted. However, uh, what I'm trying to uh, convey to you, Spencer Man, is that I'm here in my official capacity. You uh, <clears throat> get my drift? Unfortunately. 
Look, that white stuff in the shower, it's called soap. It'll never hurt you. You want sugar in your coffee? Yeah, fine. Whoa, whoa, whoa! That's enough, thanks. instant? Yeah, it's uh, some kind of new process they have now. Doesn't corrupt the flavor as much as the old method. Mm. I like it. Where do you get it? Gold's. It's, uh, it's not cheap, but I think the difference is worth it. I'm gonna have to pick up a box. This is definitely a notch above your regular instant coffee. Damn sure is. Now, Lewis, you uh, mm. said something ludicrous earlier about you being here in some sort of fishing capacity. <clears throat> I've informed you that I'm currently employed as Mort's collection agent. As absurd as that seems. Yes, well, I'm here to collect. Let me get this straight in my mind. You're here as Morton Monroe's plenipotentiary to collect money from me. If a plenipotentiary means collector, yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. Although, uh, there's something else too. And he gave you an actual gun. Hmm. Let me see that. Whoa, whoa! Huh. Goddamn looks real, all right. Loaded and everything. These even look like real bullets. Mm -hmm. you, this is a goddamn dirty, hairy hand cannon, it is. You know, Mort's right, you're gonna end up blowing your own dick off with this. Do you see this right here? This is the hammer. It needs to be forward at all times. Mm -hmm. uh, what the hell's wrong with Mort? Giving a boob like you a loaded gun. And what's an even better question? Why isn't Morton making the rounds himself? Now there's a guy that knows how to lean on people. You could learn a lot from him, Lewis. You see this knot on the side of my head? You see that? Yeah. It's on its way down now. You should have seen it when he first gave it to me. It looked like a goddamn walnut. He can't get out of bed. <laughs> uh -huh. The hemorrhoids again? Yeah. Mr. Monroe, your niece. No, thank you. Hi, Uncle Mort. I brought you that salve I told you about from the Botanic on Broadway. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. Can you uh, just uh, take it a plight in a circular motion? Sure. You've been getting enough sleep? You look awful. What are you now, 40? <sighs> Uncle Mort, I'm only 33. Well, what's the matter? Are you getting enough? Ooh, are you getting enough sleep? No. Why not? Oh, Uncle Mort. Is this about that new boy you told me about? Is there something the matter there? The things he did to me. He didn't try to touch my sweet virgin niece, did he? Did he try to slip his hand up under your blouse? Oh, he slipped something in all right, Uncle. What? For, for saying? How could you talk like that in front of your uncle? He came to my apartment and he forced himself on me. I don't want to hear this. Oh, Uncle, he was so big. Actually, I could have used an extra inch or two. Oh, Uncle, I feel so dirty. Who is this scumbag? You wouldn't know him. His name's Spencer Mann. Oh, Uncle, I'm tainted now. Used goods. Spencer Mann! Uh, time to eat more fiber. He's flat on his stomach, legs spread apart, with ice bags all over his, uh, his... Uh, Vertex. Huh? 
vertex. The acute angle described by his splayed legs would form a vertex at precisely the afflicted area. It's a geometry term. Hmm. Hmm. Vertex. I like that. Vertex. Yeah. Well, it pays to be exacting in speech, and particularly in nomenclature, it eliminates the possibility of misinterpretation. For example, when Moore told you to come over here and lean on me, was he specific about what this leaning was to entail? Actually, he never used the term lean. What terminology did he employ? Hmm. Well, the way he put it was, if I'm remembering correctly, was... Blow a hole in that lying shit weasel formula, Lewis, my boy! Sorry, that's uh, my WC field's in there, not his. Just kind of came out that way. Yeah, well, it's not exactly what I'd call a wordsmith, but vague he is not. No, sir, not more. Never vague. Not a lot of ambiguity there. Hardly any at all. Fairly succinct, I'd say. I can't believe Mort wants me dead for 7,000 lousy dollars. That seems excessive, even for Mort. Not dead. Well, that's somewhat encouraging. Not dead? No, not dead. So not dead, but shot? Right. Let me see if I'm grasping this. Not dead, but shot. Now you have it. So not dead, but shot. In any particular place? Oh yeah, it's very particular. In a particular place, huh, Louis? Uh, you know how some folks like movies that contain a lot of suspense? They like the way it keeps them on the edge of their seat. They like the anticipation, the nail-biting, the not knowing. Yeah, yeah, like that movie with Harrison Ford where Harrison's chasing that one-armed man all over the place and uh, Tommy Lee Jones is chasing him. The Fugitive. Yeah, The Fugitive. Great flick. Lots of suspense. Had me right on the edge of my seat the whole time. I had to piss like a dying man, but I stuck it out to the end. Yeah. Harrison would appreciate your commitment, Lewis, but I'm not a big suspense fan. Not a big suspense fan? You see? I never knew that about you. Good to know, good to know. If I'm ever going to see a suspense movie some Friday night and I'd like a little company, I'll remember that you're not a big suspense fan, and I'll continue on through my address book for a more compatible companion. That's good to keep in mind for future reference, Lewis, but does me bringing it up at this particular juncture in our conversation draw an apropos parallel for you? The ass. Beg your pardon? Your ass. He, uh... Once you shot in the ass. The ass, you say? I do. The ass. The keister, the caboose, the stinker. The ass. Right cheek or left? Right. He was that specific about it? He was. Did he give you a reason for the cheek choice? He did. Again, Lewis, the whole Harrison Ford fugitive parallel? Sorry. He said he wanted to, uh, wait, I'll try to quote directly here. He said, every time that shiftless shitbird... Shiftless shitbird now? Yeah, it's a fairly creative use of alliteration, if I do say so myself. Well, that impresses you, does it? Well, you gotta admit, it has a certain ring to it. It's a repetition of the shh sound. Shiftless shitbird. Rolls right off the tongue. Yeah, great. Anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah. Who was I? Oh, yeah. He said, Every time that shiftless shitbird sits down, I want that wallet of his digging into the hole in his ass and remember that the contents of it belong to Mort Monroe. I can't believe he'd shoot me in the ass for 7,000 lousy dollars. $7,336.43, actually, 
He's acquired some new accounting software. It's very exacting. This figure and its interest is, of course, compounding daily, so I guess we better do this. Whoa, damn it, Lewis, are you out of your mind? You're just gonna plug me and go have some lunch? Where's your loyalty? I don't know, Spencer. I... I'll go back and tell Mort you're still rectally intact. You know what he's gonna do to me. Look, I can get the money today. Oh, that'd be great. He wants the money too, but... But what? That's what he wants, isn't it? <sighs> he was pretty clear about my mandate. He... I don't want you shot in the ass. Yeah, it's the money. Lewis, it's always the money. No, no, he wants that too, but as dear as the old Spondulix is to Mort, I do believe that right now he's craving a little symmetry with a side order of schadenfreude too. <laughs> Look, you understand, don't you, with misery loving company the way it does, and I'm all jacked up down there and shit. Yeah, Lewis, I sympathize with his longing for thematic unity and all, but Christ! This is my own very dear to me derriere we're talking about. You're not some abstract concept. Look, if I don't perform the prescribed posterior perforation, the minute the roids recede, Mort will be coming after my own beloved behind. I try not to clench up like that. It's only gonna hurt. Damn it! Lewis, look, okay? We'll go get the money. I'll take it to him personally. If he still wants his pound of flesh, then I'll go quietly. But at least let me plead my case in person. Good God, man. This is the gluteus maximus we're talking about here. Do you want me gimping around with the gluteus minimus? Look at this. My pants hardly stay up as it is. Christ. And look at the bore on this pistol. Of all the guns Mort has, he gives you this hand cannon. He couldn't get out of bed to get the shotgun. Look, we'll go over to my father's, okay? Maybe he can lend me the money. Ooh, can we get a breakfast burrito at Paco's on the way? This gainful employment business makes a body hungry. Lewis, I don't think you've quite got the hang of this strong arm business. You're the one with the gun. It's me, Spencer. Are you gonna let me in? I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Come on, Pop. All right, come on in. Jesus, open up a window in here, will you? It smells like stale farts and bourbon. It's my version of aromatherapy. See, you got your mutt with you again. Nice to see you too, Mr. M. You look lovely as always. I'm current on all the shots. I don't want to catch no distemper. Don't worry, Mr. M. If I was going to bite something, a damn sure it wouldn't be a grisly old hunk of roadkill like yourself. Rabies? Worms? You been worms recently? You ever see a mutt dragging his ass across that carpet because he's got worms and his ass itches? It's really a god-awful thing. Sometimes it, it leaves a trail. Yeah. Can we shelve the Mutual Admiration Society crap for a while? 
I know how fond of each other you two are, but I gotta ask you something, Pop. Nope. Nope. You haven't even heard what I'm going to ask, and already it's nope? Yep. As in, nope. Besides, there's a mystery for the ages. What the prodigal son bothers schlepping his sorry ass all the way across town for? Gee, I can't imagine. Come on, Pop. That ain't fair. Well, then it must be Christmas, only I don't see no presents. Let me take a stab in the dark here. You come from money. Well, I admit it's not entirely a social call, but I wanted to see it too, Pop. <laughs> Don't that just make me feel warm all over? But before you go wasting that bad breath of yours groveling, the nag's already got it. <sighs> that little bastard Ruiz had two lengths on the bay coming down the home stretch, and he just flat died. That fucking glue factory reject. You wiped me out. It's ketchup sandwich blues for me for the rest of the month. Oh, yeah. I heard they're tearing down that old Grant building. You know where they used to have the gym? Why would they do that? That's a beautiful old building. You'd think the old crones on the historic building preservation board would put up a stink. Yeah. I think DRC Development's got their hands on it. They're going to put up office buildings or something. Yeah, but why not just rehab it? It's a beautiful old building. It's too small for DRC. They're all about square footage, triple net, that kind of shit. Little life lesson for you, Mutt. Everything in life boils down to either number one or number two. No. What? No. <laughs> Here it comes, right? Here it comes. What? Philosophy 101, as distilled by Garrett Mann, postmodern Aristotle. Stop scratching your fleas and pay attention, Mutt. School's in session. Anytime that little pea brain of yours is flummoxed by one of life's little riddles, Simply apply rule number one. If you're still vexed, you go straight to number two. Okay, so what's number one? No. It's simple. Everyone wants as much as they can get. That covers about 80% of life's mysteries. This is just sad. Don't listen to them. And number two? Number two is even simpler. Number two is... That's just the way it is. Actually, in a fucked up kind of way, that kind of makes sense. Oh, please. No, really. You happy? Ecstatic. Think I should have taught him to roll over and play dead instead? So the ponies gobbled up another social security check. Marvelous. You sure you ain't got something tucked away for tomorrow's trifecta? I'm really up against it, Pop. See, Mutt? Like I told you, number one right there, prime example. Everyone wants... As much as they can get. Hard to argue with. And no. I got seven cans of beans, three packages of spaghetti, two jars of sauce, and a half a quart of Maker's Mark to get me through to the first. No Finskis, no Sawbucks. Damn sure no deuces. Hey, by the way, I thought you were going to put in a good word for me down at the Argonaut Liquor Store. I was going to stick Twitch in their shelving bottles. He gets a paycheck, and I get 10 to 15 cases a week shoveled out the back door to me. Nobody notices, and Twitch and I get rich off of Jimmy down at Clancy's. What happened? I thought you had pull. They gave the spot to Chavez. Chavez? Sh Chavez? He'll rob them blind. Why would they give a plump spot like that to him? That makes no sense. Chavez! As soon as Rick's back is turned, he'll have his homies back a box truck up to the dock and fucking clean him right out. With Twitch in there, it'd be the odd case now, and then Rick would hardly feel it. Chavez. That just ain't logical. Which might brings us to number two. Point well taken. That's just the way it is, all right. Some shit just makes no sense, but there it is. You know, Spencer, I do believe this money yours is tradable. Why don't you take him down to the park and teach him to fetch sticks or something? Edification's done for the day. These beans are tearing the ass out of me. I got a date with a roll of butt wipe. Uh, 
Um, let's get while the getting's good, Spencer. I left my hazmat suit at home. You, uh, stay sexy, Mr. M. You know, Spencer, your old man's a mangy bastard and all, but that ethos of his, it's pretty hard to shrug off. Oh, please. No, I mean it. I'm just saying if you look closely at most things, it could apply. Everybody does want just as much as they can get. And he's right about number two, too. Sometimes that is just the way it is. So you agree the world boils down to nothing more than greed and unalterable happenstance, huh? Doesn't it? Looking at it from a biblical perspective, isn't that what precipitated the fall? All right. You got Adam and Eve in Eden with all the fruits of the garden at their disposal, save the insipid apple. I mean, they had pomegranates, grapefruit, kiwi fruit, breadfruit, passion fruit, oranges, mandarins, and on and on. But that wasn't good enough. A hundred damn fruits they could eat and one they couldn't. In my humble opinion, a rather pedestrian one, by the way, too, little nutritional value, unremarkable taste. I mean, I could see getting expelled of our pineapple. That would be understandable. But the mundane apple? Plums, peaches, papayas. That wasn't good enough? Talk about having to have your lily gilded. The stinking apple. Not to mention trying to implicate a reptile with no voice box. And when it comes right down to it, nothing's really changed. If anything, we're greedier. You listen to me, Lewis. You do not want my old man living in your head like that. It's not healthy. You saw what he did to that apartment. And the second tenant. That's just the way it is. Ain't that the truth? There ain't no use in fighting City Hall. And by City Hall, I mean the whole shebang. <laughs> just a big waste of energy. <laughs> Guys like Mort Monroe flourish while we barely make rent. I advise you cut that shit out forthwith. You saw where that stinking thinking got him. He's up there mired in that crap. You want in on that? Ah, not a question of wanting or not wanting but a question of is or isn't. I'm afraid he might be onto something. Listen, Lewis, there's only one place where that sort of reductionist wallowing gets you, and trust me, you do not want to go there. Sounds like the voice of experience. Lewis, I'm his son. You get a choice. You think? Yeah, I think. <laughs> Anybody with half a brain can see that they're all lying to us. It's all an illusion and reality's a shapeshifter. Exactly. But if truth is what you make it and meaning's arbitrary, why pick a reality that's going to do that to you? Hmm. So you're saying it's as easy to trick yourself into a rosy view of things as it is to don the old hair shirt. <laughs> Look, everybody's in the bullshitting themselves business, okay? Buddhists, Catholics, all of them. And it's all just fear, which is understandable. But what I'm saying is if you're going to bullshit yourself anyway, why not bullshit yourself with something pretty instead of something ugly? So don the blinders, huh? Look, everybody does it in one form or another. Some admit it, some don't. But why deliberately go looking for misery? Hmm. Food for thought. Pretty good pep talk there, Spencer. But riddle me this, Kimo Sabi. Why then are you such a melancholy baby? I don't know. Misalignment of the planets or something. Good morning, sunshine. Morning. Nothing. There you are. You're looking at one of those dating websites? 
What's a superstar with your pedigree? Maybe something like that. You could have any guy in Boulder. I don't want any guy in Boulder. I'm so bored with the local talent. Bunch of puffed up professors. Generic frat boys. I decided I cast my net a little wider. You don't mean Denver County. Don't be such a snob. There's a whole world past Baseline Road in case you haven't noticed. You know, it wouldn't kill you to broaden your own scope either. I swear you bring back one more Chad to the know, storm room. I know, I could use something a little more exotic myself. Exactly. This is La La Land. Theoretical Ivory Tower types, it's not for me. I I want a guy with a little curl to his lip. Maybe some dirt under his fingernails. You know, somebody with a job instead of a trust fund. Mm, you think you're gonna find him on, what's this, Cupid's Den? No, I created a profile. He's gonna find me. Hey, I gotta make a stop. At Murder Burger? Tell me you're not going to eat here. You know what's in those things. <laughs> this will only take a second. Got to pacify the good folks down at the unemployment office. I got to apply it three joints a week or I'll be unceremoniously yanked from their nipple. Jesus, this will kill an hour. Uh-uh. Not the way I do it. Come watch the master. Are you the proprietor of this fine dining establishment? I'm the assistant manager. How may I help you, sir? Mm. Oh, no need to stand on ceremony. Just us enlisted folk here, sport. I'm Louis B. Hines, Esquire, here to present myself for consideration as one of your gastronomic minions. Huh? In the vernacular. I'm applying for a job as a grease slinger in this here beanery. For expediency's sake, I've written my salary requirements on this slip of paper. I'm afraid they're non-negotiable. So you use commas between the zeros. Was that intentional? Well, you are paying for quality. I'm afraid your employment here is out of the question. Oh, quel dommage. Let me just uh, note your name for the record. Do you have a last name there, Pubert? It's Underwood, and it's Hubert, not Pubert. Oh, so it is. A little schmutz on your name tag there, Hubie. Some hapless bovine's intestines, I assume. Pity. I found Pubert far more apropos. Is there anything else I can help you with today? Hmm, well, now that you mention it, you might reduce the chemical content of those dirt burgers you're hawking here, perhaps remove the BHD from your milkshakes and buy chickens that aren't steroid-ridden mutants. But besides that, you've been very helpful. And that's a wrap. I'm impressed, very professional. Well, Without tooting my own horn, I must admit that I am the consummate professional at avoiding anything remotely resembling a profession. Nicely put. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I'm going to sort through all these horn dogs. Let's try again. They can't all be that bad. Oh no. Look at this one. Every picture has a stupid car in it. Pity the man whose personality is defined by his mode of transportation. Next. Okay, this one. Oh my <laughs> god. Is that his? Either that or he collects boa constrictors. God. Jeez. Call me old fashioned, but I think that's something that should be saved for at least the second date. God. Tempting? Pass. Here's your knight in shiny armor. He looks like he could lean down from that horse and whisk you off to his castle. Yeah, I don't like that gleam in his eye. He's holding a riding crop. Well, duh, he's on a horse. Yeah, I'll bet you 10 to 1 I want to bring that into the bedroom too. Horsemen pass by. I don't get it. 
Maybe if you did a little less partying and a little more studying. This is college, you know. A big stone building across the way? Mm -hmm. It's called the library. Yeah, I went in there once. It smelled funny. <laughs> it's kind of musty. I think it's because there was old, gritty books in there. Oh my you know? god. Nancy, your parents will be so happy to know they're getting their money's worth. Hey, Portia, I know you don't like to talk about yours, but uh, what'd your dad do when he was still alive? He was in the mob. I'm sorry, I won't bring it up again. I, I know you're sensitive about it. I was being serious. My dad was a mobster. Oh my god! Your last name is Orsini. You're Carmine the Fish, Orsini's daughter. <laughs> yeah, well, my family never really cared for the fish part, just because his eyes are set a little far apart. <laughs> what is it with you Italians and your nicknames? Everyone's always the animal or the butcher, the weasel or something. Yeah, well, you call your lucky stars that you were born Jewish. If you're a bar chat, they call you Nancy the Midget of Bramowitz. <laughs> Spencer, get a load of that guy. What guy? That guy right there. That guy? No, knucklehead, the other guy, him, right there. That guy? Yeah, that guy. What about him? What do you mean, what about him? Just look at him. Oh, I see what you mean. Some people, huh? Amen to that. I mean, really? Really. Can you beat that? Not with a stick. I mean, like, where does he get off? Where does that motherfucker get off? What the hell's he thinking? He ain't. That's for damn sure. Oh, that just ain't no way to be. Damn sure ain't. That's just plain wrong. Yep. Damn sure is. Let's go. Pick it up. You have a cabinet meeting or something? I'm like on the clock here, remember? There's like a goal involved. Oh, look at the new Lewis, all proactive and shit, taking charge, very impressive. You go, girl. We can stand here as long as you like. At the end of the day, it's still your ass. So it is, so it is. This whole enterprise is futile anyhow. Even if you do get the money, I don't see Mort showing you much mercy anyway. You ought to, you ought to just let me get this over with. You can step okay, right down I'm here. Okay, I'm moving. I'm moving. Shit, Spencer. I don't want to seem insensitive. Insensitive? God forbid you seem insensitive just because you're ready and willing to blast meat off your old buddy's butt. Listen. You listen. There are plenty of people who owe me favors in this burg, okay? I just have to call in some of my markers. <laughs> you have markers? I don't appreciate the sarcastic incredulity in your voice. Damn straight I have markers. Oh, a thousand pardons. I was just trying to imagine who could be so unfortunate to be indebted to the likes of you. Well, maybe not so much in the monetary sense, but there are many Denverites whose lives I've enriched and who will be undoubtedly eager to reciprocate. Oh, eager now? This ought to be worth the price of admission. Let's go.
Well, that didn't go so well. I think he remembers it differently. That guy? What guy? That guy. Remember the guy? It is! The guy? It's that guy! What the fuck's he doing? How's he over here? What is this? I don't know. What the fuck's he got? I... What? How's he get away with that shit? What is that? What? Oh. Fuck. Oh. Look, there's fingers. He just clipped that Rube's wallet. <laughs> yeah. And he's smooth. Best dip in the business. Yeah. Hey, fingers, nice pull. Pretty good haul here. Woo! You know, uh, kind of in a tight spot. I heard, right in the ass, huh? Yeah. You know, I'm trying to scare up enough cash to circumvent that. No, I'd love to help you, but I got my own grief. My Doris has Schlegels. The only doctor that can help her is in China. And with this haul, I got enough to get her there. <laughs> wow. Schlegels, huh? Yeah, without the treatment, it's terminal. But uh, I hear they're doing great things with prosthetics these days. Seeing the funny pages. Yeah, good luck in China. Ooh, awake, are we? Hey, Doris. Schlegels, huh? Man, I'm telling you, you think you got it bad, but then you meet someone who really has it rough. Don't worry, Dr. Chin is gonna make everything all better. Good little turtle. You're a good little turtle. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Caring husband, though, huh? Yeah, I suppose, to be honest. I didn't even know he was married. I didn't either. So come on, we got, we got a brainstorm here. I'm running out of, I'm running out of options. Well, what about all this crap? Can't what, we get rid of that? What crap? All this crap, all this... Why you gotta call it crap? Well, come on, we could go down to Paul's Pawn Shop and... Get I rid just of this got stuff. this! You I... spent money on that and you knew I owed money? I mean, look at it. It's just so... It's cheap! It's not! Would you Bam! Remember? Look how bright it is! Boo! Ooh! Dude, don't... Don't yet... What? Why are you yelling? Because it just... Ah, oh, it hits okay, you. Look all right, how pretty. All right. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. You know what? Let's go down and get rid of it. I got... No! Yes, how much no. you... How much you pay for it? Twenty? What, 50 bucks for the whole thing? What is this, by the way? <laughs> 50 bucks, that's Fif hilarious. What, 20? 250 from Big Vin, down on, uh, see, what was it? Around 5th. It's fucking bright, though. Mm, look at it, it's so pretty, look. Uh, see, Two, 250. I gotta work on my tan. 250. Oh, where's the sun, where's the sun? Uh, uh, see, then I can look Lewis. like you, before. Lewis, 250. After, before, after. Uh, it's pretty, you're jealous, you're jealous. That's 250. Why, yeah, 250. What? What? Mr. Monroe, there's a ninja here to see you. Thanks, Ellsworth. Uh, Tokyo Rose, lovely to finally make your acquaintance. I Get up, but, uh... Incapacitated, I see. What's all that stuff about your vertex there? They're ice bags. I'm experiencing a little bit of derriere distress. Ah, the old hemorrhoidals. So that's why you called. It's not my usual line of work, but in this economy, a girl's got to be flexible. Buck up. I'll have them off in a jiffy. Hey, no, no, look. I, uh, I assure you, the doctor tells me that they will proceed to their own accord in just a short amount of time. I called you here on a different matter. You sure? It'll only take a second. Who knows, you come out of this all right? I might consider adding this to my list of services. Work's been a little slow lately. Might not hurt to diversify. Let's have a gander. Jesus Christ! Boy, you're not the squeamish type, are you? Can't be in my line of work. Yeah, I suppose not. No, I'm really more interested in your traditional services. You see, there's a couple of delinquent backsides I would like you to attend to. That motherfucker Spencer man owes me seven thousand dollars. I want you to take, cut him up into small pieces. Seven G's. I must be slipping. There was a time when I could find that kind of chump change in my other pants. Ah, uh, the older they get, the better they were. 
What? You're really just prolonging the inevitable. Hey. I know who always has seven grand lying around. Hmm. I don't... I don't like where this is going. Once again, the alley's right over there. We'll get you a bottle of Jack to kill the pain. Louisiana George has always got a valise of cash in his office. Every time I've been up there, I've seen it right there next to his desk. His girls keep them in the chips. Why is a pimp like Louisiana George gonna give you a dime, <laughs> let alone seven Gs? He ain't exactly gonna give it to me. Oh, I knew I didn't like the sound of this. You can count me out right here. I got enough problems without having Louisiana George and those two maniac sidekicks Slasher and Gouger coming after me, and I suggest you don't have any truck with them either. Whew. Those boys don't play. Come on. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Let me talk till you're blue in the face. There's just no way in hell I'm getting on the wrong side of Louisiana George. They'll never even know it was us. Come on, you owe me this one. Man, you got a rich imagination. I owe you? That's hysterical. This ought to be good. As I remember, when you need me to step in and save your kneecaps from Fat Mike that time. Oh, ancient history. How many times are you gonna play that card? Oh, and your genius plan on that one wound up killing Aunt Sandy's Chihuahua. Or did that slip your mind? Collateral damage. It's not my fault. What am I, a chemist? <laughs> Hell of an explosion, wasn't it though? Yeah. All they found was the collar on a porch. Half a block away. But like I said, that's ancient history. You've called in that favor more than once already. Uh-uh, my friend. We're even. Look, this is how it'll play out. First you, in disguise, will kick up a ruckus in front of George's establishment. That'll bring him down the front staircase. You better have a look at this, boss. Some dirt leak down there is pissing all over your whip. Dark sucker! Oh, look at that stream. You must have got a hold like half a gallon this morning. I just had that bitch waxed. Let's go get him. Let's get wait, him. wait, wait. If we all go out the front door, he might get away. What we'll do is I'll sneak out the north side and we'll get that mofo in a pickle. Let's right. go. So as you're getting the way down the street, I'll have already slipped up the fire escape, grabbed the suitcase and be headed back down. No muss, no fuss. We're rendezvous back at the bar. Hey, Spencer. Come on outside. Why? So I can blow your ass off. That's hardly a cordial greeting. What happened to your face? Come on. I'll make it quick. Tell me this was worth it. Not quite. Well, how much money was in the case? Looks like I grabbed the wrong case. So what's in it? I think you'd call them tools of the trade. Let's go. I gotta get cleaned up. <laughs> Look at this one. Oh, that's gotta be Photoshop. <laughs> Did they get that big? <laughs> Not on humans. Maybe it's a Sasquatch. Kind of looks like one. God, creepy. Next. It looks kind of interesting. Mm, I don't know. Look, you asked me to help you weed them out. We're not getting anywhere. I know. I have a proposition for you. What do you say we pick out three possible candidates, get them all up here to Boulder, and then we'll audition them? Picking the guy is not my strong suit. I always pick the wrong one. I'll say. River Eddie? I'm trying to forget. He played the tuba underneath our window for three weeks straight. Where he got the idea you can serenade a woman with a tuba? <laughs> Don't know. Okay, so we'll devise another method of choosing Mr. Wright? Like what? Well, it's gotta be something that shows he recognizes the real you. Hmm. Let's see. I know. Love song. I don't know. Well, you just said that you can't pick them. Could you do any worse than Everett? 
God, we agreed his name would never come up again. God, Everett. There goes two years of therapy down the toilet. <sighs> All right, you've made your point. We'll do it your way. Atta girl. So he'll do? I suppose. Okay. Oh, that guy's kind of cute. Hmm. Yeah, you're right. Wait, what's that bulge under his pants? The usual. But I think he's being quite discreet compared to the others. At least it's she. <laughs> Not that bulge. The one down by his foot. Is that? It's, it's one, one of those, those ankle, ankle monitors. monitors. Well, there's your bad boy. He's pretty fun, all right. Look at those eyes. Oh yeah, I could look at this guy all day. I don't know what it is, but I'm being drawn in somehow. Hmm. Well, I do believe the lady's smitten. <laughs> I don't know. He looks kind of dangerous. And there's that ankle bracelet and everything. Yeah, I know. Isn't it cool? I'm gonna reply. So we need one more? How about that sexy Latino guy? But I'll shut you up. Alright. I guess that's it then. Let the games begin. Bring on the contestants. So Spencer, what's your take on the big picture anyway? The big picture? Yeah. I mean, do you think there is actually a Cosmic Joker running this comedy club down here, or are we all just free agents? Well, I think Enzo Ferrari had the right idea. The car guy? The same. What do you have to say? When he was asked what his motivation was for creating all those rolling works of art, he replied simply, It kept my mind off death. Mm, I don't follow. What I think he was getting at was that since there is no provable answer to your question, the best strategy to keep yourself from going nuts is to keep your mind occupied with something else. Anything else. Sometimes I think that's what drives most people, even if it's subconscious. But the real trick is to convince ourselves that whatever we distract ourselves with, these things we call our lives, are something besides ultimately pointless and absurd. Woo! And they say all the black holes are in space. Stephen Hawking's ought to get a load of you. So is that what's eating at you then? How can I put this without sounding ridiculous? You haven't been able to focus on your distractions? Beats me, Bubla. I think next time I'll bring a decaf. Don't look at me like that. I mean it. Stop being so judgmental. The body's gotta eat, you know. We'll be there soon enough. Don't think you spooked me either. Just seeing how the Broncos did. Oh no. Where'd you get to, you little porker? Oh man, I knew that thing was possessed. Spencer's gonna kill me. Please, little girl, be very careful with that. That's not a toy. Oh, yes, it is. It's my new dolly. No, it's not. That's mine. Give it back. No. Come on, come on. Be nice. I'll, I'll give you a lifesaver for it. Shove your stinking lifesaver. Come on, give that back to me. What kind of creep tries to steal a doll from a cute little girl like that? Can a guy take a dump in peace? What the hell's going on? Daddy, this bad man tried take my dolly and he tried to give me candy. This pervert offered your little girl candy. I think he was trying to lure her out to his car. Remember that girl that disappeared a couple weeks ago? I bet this is the same scumbag. Oh. Oh.
So, uh, getting back to what we were talking about earlier. Oh, shit. The old raison d'etre thing, huh? This is my old man's fault. All right, grasshopper. What now? Well, if all we're doing is distracting ourselves with temporal minutia, what's the point? The point? Yeah, the point. Uppercase. The point. <laughs> I think the point is nobody knows what the point is. I think Keats said it best, though. He was dead by the time he was your age, and he had a better handle on it than the rest of them. Keats, huh? So what was his take on it? Negative capability. Negative capability? Oh, it's got negative in it, so of course it would appeal to you. What's that supposed to mean? You know how some people's glasses are half full? Oh, I suppose you're going to tell me mine's half empty. No, <laughs> you take it a little further than that. How's that? Not only is your glass half empty, it's cracked. And what's in it is piss. Oh, Jesus. I'm just a realist. I thought we agreed reality was malleable and subjective. I'm a realist in the realm of my own reality. Yeah. How's that working out for you? Oh, piss off, will you? You know, all I've learned in these many long years of putting shoe leather to this whirling orb is that it's as important as what you don't do as what you do. I look at life as a, as a minefield to be negotiated, a series of traps to be sidestepped. You've got the, the, the lousy job trap, the booze trap, the wrong woman trap, the ill-chosen associate trap, etc., etc. Yes, I'm uh, familiar with that last one. Yeah. So do you think Keats was as miserable as you are? No. I mean, yes. I mean, what do you mean as miserable as I am? I'm not miserable, I'm wary. There's a difference. And the concept of negative capability has got nothing to do with that, okay? The concept of negative capability is simply the ability to continue on in the face of doubt. To forge ahead without any cosmic assurance. But ahead towards what? Oh, Jesus, forget about the destination. Focus on the journey. I think that's all there is anyway. Look, there's Henry's house. Let's see if he's around. You're giving me a goddamn headache. Henry isn't here right now. Hi, Candy. Hi, Louis. I haven't seen you in a while. Where do you two know each other from? Oh, uh, we go back a while, don't we, Candy? Yes, we do. Yeah, so if you don't mind me asking, what are you doing in Henry's house? Actually, I met Henry at the Larimer Lounge last night. Not that it's any of your goddamn business. <clears throat> Lucky Henry. Not so lucky, Henry. I'm afraid that he passed out before he could cash in on all those Singapore slings he bought me. Really? Had to be to work real early this morning. Left me here by my little lonesome. Who's this little peacock, anyway? Oh, that's, uh, that's just Spencer. Pay him no mind what so ever. Don't worry. Just keep him downwind. How far can crabs jump again? Hey, man, come on. Come on over here, Lewis. Like I was saying, Henry couldn't quite seal the deal, and I've got an itch that needs scratch. Uh, what do you say we slip into the bedroom for a spell? You got something? That's a tad insulting. You have it in your hand, my dear. Hmm? Not the present itself. The wrapping paper. Huh? 
She means the boot, dummy. Oh. oh. <laughs> Oh. Shit. Fresh out. Help a brother, Spencer. Sorry, Romeo, no tango. Fuck. Um. Uh, uh, all right, um, Candy, you just wait right here. I'll be right back. Right. Oh, Lewis! Oh, baby, I know, I know, I know. I'll be right back. I'll be back. I'll be back. I'm gonna run to the store. Come on, let me see a dollar. Come on, man. Come on, let's put it right here. Come on. Let me see a dollar right, right here. All right, man, I got it. Hold on, man. Damn. You got a dollar. I know you got a dollar. Yeah. All Shit. right, let me see this dollar. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, man, let me call you back. I'm in the middle of something right now. Or at least I hope to be soon. Yeah. No good deed goes unpunished, all right? Shit. Hello, my good man. Where may I procure a box of your finest lambskin prophylactics? Extra large, of course. What? Condoms, man. You got any condoms? Oh, uh, over there. Thank you, sir. You're far too kind. Hey, you must pay for those. Get back here. Oh, what the fuck? What do you know? Turns out I did have one in my wallet for a rainy day. How's that for luck? What can I say? He grows on you. They tell me I'm an acquired taste. <laughs> all right, time's a-wasting. Places to go, people to see, and all that. Excuse me. See you boys later. This is taxing. Is being anywhere near Spencer Man always is. I need a little bump. Come on, I still got credit in here. Oh, they fucking kick 
Gentlemen, and you too, Spencer. Cute. Give me a bourbon and a bourbon. Put it on Lewis here's tab. Yeah, naturally. What do you got there, Spencer? Nothing. That's a uh, piss poor penmanship you have there. That's um, how should I say, uh, half assed. <laughs> Christ, does everybody know? Oh, come on, Spencer. I'm a bartender. We're a minor deity. Basically omniscient. Besides, everybody knows the Mort's up there gooned up on painkillers, ranting about how he's gonna come down hard on all his deadbeats now that they know he's immobilized. Naturally, uh, your name came up. Naturally. Hey, uh, remember the black guy who used to make the little chocolate chip cookies? Famous Amos? Yeah. Now we got Famous Anus here. <laughs> oh, come on. Spencer, don't go feeling all sorry for yourself. I mean, whatever you did to piss him off, I mean, even if he's a little out of line. A little out of line? He wants my flesh, a little out of line? Well, my point is, you got this and tenfold more coming your way considering the shit you've pulled over the years. I mean, this is how karma works. There's no statute of limitations on karma. You know the old saying. You know, a body comes in here for a bit of solace not to endure a cataloging of his sins. What old saying? The one that they had you in mind for when they wrote it. You may be through with history, but history ain't through with you. <laughs> Still, it's a pretty stiff sentence, even for the likes of you. I can't imagine why you'd want to ventilate a guy over 7,000 lousy bucks. You must have done something else to piss him off. I recall you in here about a month ago with his niece. And you guys were going pretty hot and heavy in that booth right over there. Not that hot. Not that heavy. It's not how I remember it. You, Cad. Did you deflower that fair maiden? Fair maiden? She's 35 if she's a day. And how many fair maidens you know pull out the Chinese basket trick as soon as they get you back to their place? Oh, nice visual. Still, you know how uncles are with nieces. She's as pure as the driven snow in his eyes. I mean, in his mind, you intercepted and defiled her on her way down to the convent to sign on. Yeah, I was wondering what I'd done to put a hair across his ass this time. I've owed him more than this before and I've always paid. He always gets it in the end. Well. He's got it in the end now. And that just exacerbates the situation. Makes him twice as ornery. Yeah, but this is past vindictive. <laughs> Watch my drink, will ya? I got a turtle head poking. Oh, what class. No wonder everybody loves you. Spencer Mann, ladies and gentlemen. The Cary Grant of our generation. And what's your story, sidekick? You look a little down in the mouth today yourself. Usually, uh, Spencer's got the gloom department all to himself. You're looking at the instrument of his debutment. Come again? Huh. You, huh? <laughs> Wonder who Mort was gonna get to muck out his stalls while he was horizontal. That's pretty grim, though, getting you to do your old pal like that. That's what you get for betting on the donkeys, huh? I mean, still, talk about rubbing old Spencer's nose right in it. That Mort, he's got a cold, hard turd for a heart. So you gonna do it? You're asking me like I got a choice. If I don't, then I'm the half-assed one. And Spencer will still get his. Mort will just press gang somebody else. What difference does it make who does it? I mean, one damage dumper is better than two, right? Why two? Put us together, we'll make one complete buttocks. Well, you're a prize ass, all right, Heinz. Mm. Yeah? Well, fuck you very much, too. No, I'm serious. You're a prize-winning, top-shelf, A-number-one ass. Any last words before I go upside your head with this bottle? You know what Spencer did with the good bit of that seven grand he borrowed? Hmm. Let me see. Wild guess here. Pissed it away on booze and hookers? <laughs> you really don't know, do you? Oh. Oh, this is rich. 
You thought you were conflicted before? I wouldn't want to be in your shoes. So who the fuck does? I don't want to be me. So join the most non-exclusive club in Denver. The Society of People Who Wouldn't Want to Be Lewis Hines. Well, out with it, Swill Slopper. What noble cause did Prince Spencer Mann squander Mort's filthy lucre on? The orphanage, maybe? No, wait. Cancer research. PETA. No, I got it, I got it. Starving African children. It's got to be starving African children. You know that dice game you were running over on Emerson and Third? Allegedly running. Go on. You know how you got a uh, tip-off about an impending raid about a week ago, just in time to save your skin? Yeah. Froggy Phil from Aurora called and tipped me off, so? Well, who told Froggy Phil? A little boydy, I suppose. How the hell should I know? He said two of his boys were there. Uh, Wacky Walt and that other guy they call... Uh... Porky Pete, yeah. <laughs> what, are you running a news service? How the hell do you know all this shit? Well, it's not a little bird, I'll tell you that. Every bent guy in town comes in here one or two times a week. They get a couple of belts in them and they start spilling their guts all over the bar. Ugh, the book I could write. Anyway, as you obviously already know, those two mugs were throwing the bones chez moi. Phil heard about the bust, knew they were there, and since they're big earners for him and they ain't earning when they're cooling their heels in county, he called and tipped me off. End of story. Yeah, the end of your version. You want to hear the real one? Probably not. But go ahead, disgorge all-knowing one. Well, Spencer knows what a dick slap rookie you are at this gangster shit, so he's been keeping Sergeant Flowers on the payroll for just this sort of occasion. He slips him a little every week in a booth right over there. I've seen the handoffs. It's smoother than your donkeys, that's for sure. And so far, Flowers hasn't fumbled a one. So Spencer pays uh, Flowers to keep his ears open at the precinct for you. So he, he knew you were gonna end up in hot water, but he didn't want you to know that he was babysitting you because he didn't want to bruise your fragile little ego. So he did it on the down low. So Flowers calls Spencer, Spencer calls Froggy Phil, and Froggy Phil calls you, you ingrate. And now you're gonna pay back the only guy in the world who's been looking out for you with a lead enema. <laughs> Why so glum, Sprout? I'm the one on the chopping block here, not you. Come on, let's get out of this clam shack. I got a few ideas left. Oh, and Barkeep. You might want to pull out the plunger. Somebody left a swimmer in the second stall. A real survivor. Not me, of course. <laughs> ah, cheers. Oh, you rat. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, huh? Think you can just hit it and run, huh? You better run, you creep. Come on, Angelica, I, I'm not the stick around type, all right? We both had our little sport and, and then we moved on. Oh, so you get your jollies and that's it, huh? Throw me aside like a used dish rag and move on to the next piece of coos, huh? Well, you're gonna get yours, Spencer, man. You keep taking your meds, doll. You know what the doctor said. Wait, Spencer, come back! I love you, you can't treat me this way! I hate you! I mean, I love you! Please, Spencer! Wait! I mean, I love you! Spencer,
sure know how to pick them. Blame it on the captain. He made me do it. <laughs> I wonder what she told her uncle. See, Spencer? That's why I prefer to meet my women online. Yeah, well, call me old-fashioned. Where's my money, you derelict? This guy on him is a dog track <laughs> ticket and a buck. Shit. He spent my money on a long shot trifecta. This fucking idiot. Bastard. Snowball's chance in hell on that. Fuck. This was a hell of a lot of energy wasted on nothing. Fucker. The ponies are bad enough, but the dogs? Nobody wins with the dogs. What the hell am I supposed to do with this useless piece of shit? You know what? Let's give it to my pop. He's been trying to declare his gambling losses with the IRS lately. Maybe this is the final 80 bucks that pops him into a lower tax bracket or something. You can claim gambling losses on your taxes? You can if you say it's your profession. <laughs> you got a point. He don't do much else. No. Let's get the hell out of here, yeah. fucker. I believe was Mord Monroe's less than subtle way of telling you that not only are you fired, but you've been sent to collection as well. <laughs> Great. Oh, that second arrow, definitely intended for your uh, tender little tushy, not mine. Right. Where it's never been known for its patience. Shit. I knew I should have plugged you right away. Shit. Well, it's not like I've never been fired before. Maybe if I plug you right now, he'll call off that she demon or whatever the hell that was. Yeah, don't bank on it. She seems to take her work rather seriously. Fuck. Is that your phone? Yeah. I'm getting a text. Hmm. Spencer. Oh, man. What? What do you got? A very encouraging response from this absolutely dazzling girl up in Boulder. Holy Christmas, she wants to meet me. Yeah? You got a picture on me? Ah! <laughs> not a chance, you old cock blocker, you. Come on, you're still not upset about that girl earlier, are you? <laughs> you know what? What? You're right. Any broad that would settle for you. No need to get personal about it. Oh, you're right. She is out of your league, stud. Apparently not. She wants to meet me post-haste. Mm -hmm. I've got to highest hence my ass up to Boulder pronto. I'll give Saul a call. Are you forgetting a little something here? What? Well, I'm loath to bring it up, but aren't you supposed to be shooting someone in the ass? Ah, later for that shit. I got a feeling this is the one. Well, I'd be the last one to interfere with destiny. The bus goes there. There's a stop. What, are you kidding? You saw that face. I can't show up there on a bus. Saul will lend me his caddy. Sure he will. Yeah. But hey, 
Far be it from me to interfere. I get a stay of execution. I'm not looking to give Taurus in the mouth. Sally Forth Casanova. I believe I'm a little parched. <laughs> what are you guys doing? Oh shit, are you boosting this car? Yeah, Porky Pete told us he needed a Lexus, so here we are. Porky Pete, huh? You know what? Porky Pete can wait. I hereby command this chant in the name of Eros. Who? The Greek god of love, Sal. You know, you did have a rather abnormal glow about you today, Lewis. Who's a lucky filly this time? All I know is that she's of athletic build, smokes occasionally, likes horses, walks on moonlit beaches, and white Zinfandel. You two can help me storm the castle. Godspeed to Boulder! I tell you, if this shorty wasn't so fine, I would never stoop to no nonsense like this. I mean, who ever heard of having to write a song to define a woman's essence anyway? Either way, once she gets a look at you two chumps, all this bullshit is going right out the window. You know what? I bet she's got one of those hidden cameras in here somewhere, in which case you two might as well catch the three o'clock bus back to Funky Town or wherever it is you escaped from. You know what, I bet she's got it in this plant, right here. Yeah. What did you get me into here? You know, I can't see the third one. He's too far from the camera. Hey, don't judge the book by its cover. Underneath, they could be quite sensitive. I mean, that's just all insecure, macho bravado, masking deep-seated feelings of inadequacy and mothering issues. Yes, and? And we had a plan here. You agreed that you pick the first guy that sends the real you through the music, right? You're not gonna pussy out on me, are you? Well, by definition, aren't we entitled to? I'm gonna bring in the first contestant. Fix your hair. This way? Oh, yeah. Good afternoon, my lovely. You are looking positively enchanting. Look, I know you don't want to trouble those pretty green eyes on those two troglodytes back there. So what do you say, you and I, we slip out the back door and talk about how many kids we're going to have over some bubbly. <laughs> wow. Thank you for the very tempting offer, but you know the ground rules here. Did you bring a song? Oh, all right, all right. You're all about business, huh? I like a decisive woman. Of course I got a song for you, baby. I wrote this one just for you. Well, my peeps, you know, come from Morocco And I'm better than some cheesy taco I know you ain't going for that other one Fly girl like you don't need no bum So as you can see, I'm heaven sent Let's blow this joint and go back to my tent Word What? No? Come on, baby, you, you're killing me here I don't suppose you would be interested in it. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm out of here. Sophia. Wow. You're turning out to be a real yenta so far, Nance. I suppose you're going to insist on continuing with this carnage. Sometimes you got to kiss a few frogs. Be a sport. May I present? Gustavo. Ooh la la! 
that picture didn't do you justice. I fear you for a 34, but I think those are 36s you're packing. Am I right? All right. I'm beginning to see the error of my ways. Uh, did you bring a song? Yes, I did. Te traigo mi corazón, mi corazón no descansa. Te quiero con mi corazón, pero mi corazón no descansa. Me duele mi corazón, pero mi corazón no descansa. Quisiera que tu amor me daría el alma. Certainly is interesting. Do you hear that? That's a badass tuba, baby. <laughs> okay, um, I don't think you've quite gotten the idea. Portia, here, was looking for a song that embodied her spirit. And, and that's not it. Then I don't know where that leaves us. Hmm. Say, you don't drive a pickup truck with a big Ducati emblem on the back window, do you? Does my baby. She's cut lower. And toad. Did you park it in a handicapped spot out there? Hijo de puta! Mi troca! I'm sorry. Apparently I'm no Yenta. I'm sorry. Let's just see what contestant number three is like. All right. <clears throat> Ta-da! He's currently unemployed, no stranger to the county lockup. His hobbies include graft and illegal games of chance. Meet Mr. Lewis Hines of the wrong side of Denver, Colorado. Cue the music. Thanks for the build up short stuff. I'm a shoe in now. So, did you bring something to play your song with? Song? Yeah, you big tummy, the one that you chose, that you feel embodies the, the spirit of my roommate here? Uh, oh, that song, um, no, uh, I mean... Okay, hold the presses, hotshot. You know the drill. Either you play your song for her, or those two cute guys waiting out there get to drive you all the way back to Denver. Oh, all right, um, I got an idea. Wait, wait right here. Runs her fingers through her hair And my whole world stops moving She's an angel sitting there May I stare When she moves around the room Thank mm -hmm. you. 
thousand years for just one kiss a thousand more for her I'd gladly miss my everything to hold her hand to make her smile I'd be a happy man no she is a woman like that she is a woman like that I'm going to leave you guys to get better acquainted. Hey, um, who are those two cute guys? Oh, that's uh, Saul and Sal. Try not to scare them off. I'm going to need a ride back after. Not so fast, cowboy. Why don't you come over here and tell me all about yourself? You're back again, huh? Apparently. And you're Lewisless. That's a first. Sprout spread his wings and flown off to nest with some chickadee in Boulder. Well, good for him. It's about time he realized what a bad influence you are. Me? Never. You're the only guy I know who's ever managed to be a bad influence on himself. Oh, by the way, there was a ninja in here looking for you. Marvelous. Can I get a bourbon and a bourbon. You know, Spencer, sailors, uh, they pay attention to atmospheric changes, cloud formations, uh, fluctuations in barometric pressure, things like this, in order to make nautical decisions. Well, you know, in life there's a kind of barometer that it behooves a person to pay attention to so they can tell if uh, maybe things are a little off kilter. I mean, you know, uh, when certain things happen, it should send up red flags, uh, subtle clues like, say you were to walk into a bar and the first thing somebody said to you is, hey, there was a ninja here looking for you. See, that might give you pause to consider the, the direction your life is currently taking. Probably. And did I also hear correctly when they told me that you invested all of your hard scam money into a certain illegal statuary scheme that hinges on the suspect abilities of a Mr. Twitch McGillicuddy? I mean, please tell me that that's not true. I'm afraid so. And no news on the Rialto for three days either. Not particularly reassuring. No. I don't suppose it would be. You know, your mind is one of life's great little mysteries. Tell me, Mr. Man, was it a similar sequence of events like this that uh, got you and your old man run out of New York those oh so many moons ago? Hey, you're the local oracle, you tell me, all knowing one. No, that's the key adjective is local. See, my purview doesn't extend much further past Aurora, certainly not past the Kansas border. But I've always wondered why you and your pop didn't stick it out in the Big Apple. Pop got homesick for the old Rocky Mountain High thing. So we moved back. Yeah, that's, that's one story that I've heard. Those ears of yours are like regular little satellite dishes, aren't they? What else did you hear? Well, I heard that uh, your father and Alberto Orsini both had the hots for the same woman. And she decided she wanted to marry your old man. And so Alberto Orsini decided he was going to have them both whacked. So your father nobly withdrew to Denver. And she ended up married to Alberto. 
and Alberto graciously let your father keep breathing. And all the while, he was still married to your mother. I mean, at least that's what I heard. Yeah, these numbskulls around here got wild imaginations. I take anything they say with a grain of salt. You asked me what I heard and I told you. So now what? Now what, what? Well, so now that any hope of financial solvency has evaporated along with Twitch, and you've got ninjas looking for you. Ninja, singular. So far I've only seen one. Oh, well, <laughs> ninja, if there's only one, why worry about it? I mean, ants at a picnic, right? What do you expect, what are you, what are you gonna do now? Gonna finish my drink and go see what the weather's like in Miami. You know, for a guy who once caught an elk with a fishing pole, you sure turned out to be pathetic. Why don't you get married or something? You know how Groucho Marx always said he never belonged to a club that would have him as a member? Yeah, I suppose there's that. Yes, there's that. Well, <clears throat> no offense, but... Uh, since I would rather not have my establishment awash in blood and arrows and the like, I'd appreciate it if maybe you'd uh, finish up your drink and skedaddle. I'd be greatly obliged. You know, my barometer tells me I should go out the back. Fucking guy. Shut up. The fuck is he? Ah. Ah. Who is that guy? He, he's, he's right. Who the fuck is he doing? That shit ain't right, man. It's disgusting. Ugh. Ugh. Oh no. What is it? You know how I told you about my friend Spencer? Oh yeah. The one who's a terrible influence. Has the moral fiber of a hyena and the table manners of an orangutan. The same. Well, it appears he's been kidnapped by our arch enemy, my former employer, Mort Monroe. Wait a minute. You have an arch enemy named Mort? Yeah. You know, the Indian cultures judge the value of a man by the impressiveness of his enemies. Yours is named Mort. He's worse than he sounds. What are you going to do about it? I'm sorry. I know I just met you and I want to spend the rest of my life with you and everything, but... But first you have to deal with your arch enemy, Mort. I'll come right back to you as soon as I fix this, okay? You better. I'll be right here waiting. Okay. Wait, Lewis. What did you say Mort's last name is? Monroe, why? Nothing. Just be careful. Your nickel, start talking. Uncle Alberto? Is that you? Portia, how good are you to call? How you been? How do you like school? How's my little pre-law major? It's good. I'm good. Listen, 
Uncle Alberto, I need your advice. Anytime, sweetheart. What can I do for our little scholar? I've got a friend who's gotten in Dutch over some money that he owes to a mid-level fish out here. This guy's hell-bent on revenge, and I just know it's gonna crush my friend if he goes through with it. What's the protocol on something like that? Well, I could intervene and take it to the bosses, but I'm here and I can't leave New York. They got me under house arrest again. What if you were to say that you're sending a representative in your place? I could do that, but you're gonna need a silver-tongued devil, though. Those old boys out in Denver don't brook a lot of nonsense. If you owe, then you owe. And there ain't much more to it. I hope you got somebody convincing in mind. I was thinking I could argue this case for him. Honey, uh, I know it's a different world we're living in, but that's just not gonna work with that bunch. They're old school. Women aren't even allowed to serve the coffee at those sit-downs. You need to find somebody. I'll line up a guy for you. Listen, this is gonna sound crazy, but... I wouldn't worry about our old friend Mort Monroe's ability to devise new and fresh ways of reprimanding one measly Spencer man. I know what it's like to be on the end of Mort's big boot. Ain't no place nice. It's Spencer. Shit, Mort doesn't have him, the Duke does. He's been taken to the Duke's warehouse on 58th. Run me by my place so I can grab my good shirt. I gotta look respectable. Where's Ellsworth going? He's going to park the car, moron. Mort, why don't you just let this whole thing go? If I had your money, I'd burn mine. Everybody knows you got bagfuls of this stuff squirreled away. Yeah, these two, they owe. Now they pay. You're taking a pretty hard line here, Mort. This is not gonna make you popular around this town. <laughs> the truth is, Spencer Mann is one of us, a man of the people. People like us, anyways. And you know, Mort, people like him. He's provided a certain amount of comic relief over the years. And you, well, you're already. Already what? Reviled? Despised? Why? Because I'm not a handsome cad that blows all this money on Friday night buying rounds for the house, then hands in my IOU on Monday morning at the diner for my scrambled eggs? He's a beloved local character for shit like that? Or is it because I never woke up half naked in my car on the front lawn of the governor's mansion with tens and twenties stuck in my underwear and did not remember getting up on stage with the strippers at the Diamond Cabaret? Or is it because I never won a hundred dollar bet that I could slip a cow past the front desk at the Brown Palace Hotel? This is why everybody loves him? for these shabby parlor tricks of his? What's he got, a little what? Panache? <laughs> what about me? I'm a personable guy. Don't I provide a necessary public service? Where else are these rag pickers gonna turn when the wolf is at their door? <sighs> Answer me that! So my interest rate is a little high. It's my money that I'm putting out on the street, so I know the value of a dollar, and I watch every one. Is that a character flaw? I'll see you inside. Heavy lies the head that wears the crown. Bring that knucklehead in here. Hey, he is Chief. Spencer Man. And the beauty he is. Save the commentary. Court's in session here. Jesus, Spencer, you look like shit. In his defense, we did have him in the trunk a while. Mr. Donegan, if I could just have a few more days. Where's Mort Monroe? He's supposed to be here for this. We got him out in the hall. You want we should bring him in? That's the way it works, dummy. He's the plaintiff. Get him in here plaintin'. Oh, 
leaving. Good afternoon, Your Excellency. I'm sorry I had to come down to this. I was handling the situation on my own. Dirtball here did not pay like he agreed. I was just exercising my rights under the code. I really don't see where this is a matter for arbitration. Jesus, Mort. You just can't shake those roids, can you? <laughs> I wouldn't take it personal if I was you. That's probably not God's judgment on you. Look, <clears throat> normally I wouldn't interfere. But Spencer's father asked me to take a look at this case personally. Garrett Mann and I, we played ball together at St. Anthony's, didn't we, Garrett? Yes, we did. Not too badly either, I might add. You remember that shellacking we gave Aurora Central? When was that? What, 63? Sent them home with their tail between their legs, we did. Your shot at the buzzer clinched it. Your pass set it up. Hey, it's great that this is old home week and everything. Can we get this show on the road? If you'll just let me bust a cap in this retard's ass, we can go watch the Nuggets. Look, Garrett, I know we go way back and all, but you can't go around breaking the rules or the whole system collapses. You got any reason I shouldn't grant this bozo his pound of flesh? Duke, he's my kid. I feel for you, but my hands are kind of tied on this one. Who's this? Lewis Hines? <laughs> What's your involvement here, Sonny? Another dirtbag. I sent him out to give Manny's comeuppance, and he welched on Ed just like he welched on a bed. I got a bullet for him, too. My, but aren't we a little bloodthirsty lately, Mark? What do you have to say for yourself, Hines? He's right. I owe the money, and I'm part of the reason that Spencer's in hock to him, too. You know what? Fuck it. Go ahead, Mort, you piece of shit. Fire away. In fact, you can use both bullets on my keister and spare Spencer. He was only looking out for me. Goddamn. That's noble of you, Heinz. I'm impressed. What do you say, Mort? You gonna maim a stand-up guy like this over what you're taking in your sports action every week? Damn straight I am. But I ain't gonna let Spencer off that easily. He's gotta come in as sure as the sun's gonna shine tomorrow. Get them two over there against the wall. Get their drawers down. I wanna make sure they ain't got no pillar underpants on. Hold your horses there, Wyatt Earp. Seems like we have a new development. Now what? For some unknown reason, Alberto Orsini has stooped to take an interest in this case. What the fuck would a big time dying like Alberto Orsini care about a couple of two-bit lowlifes like these two? Apparently he cares a lot. He sent his personal conciliary to explain. Well, what are you waiting for? Go get him. This is Alberto Orsini's personal emissary. To what do we owe this honor, Mr. Souza. Mr. Orsini sends his regards, Duke. Mr. Orsini, as you know, misses nothing. How he heard about this isn't important right now. What is important is that he has a rather firm and considered opinion on the matter. We're all ears, Mr. Souza. But with all due respect, and believe me, I say this with the utmost sincerity, there's not a lot of gray area here. These boys over here have violated an agreement, and therefore they must pay. God damn right. Ah, you must be the plaintiff. Mr. Monroe, I take it. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes. You handle all the sports betting on the west side of town. And I'm working my way east, too. Any day now. Yes, I understand you've become the man to see these days. Look, I know you're a busy man, and I don't want to take up a lot of your valuable time. Let me just clear up a few things, and we'll let you get right down to the justice you're so obviously owed here. Ah, finally, someone with some brains around here. Now this is how you should run an organization. By the way, what's going on back there? Forget it. I don't want to know. So, Mr. Monroe, 
since you do handle all the action west of Broadway. I believe you would be the party who would have taken a bet from a Mr. Shorty Dobson about two months ago. No? A rather substantial bet? Shorty Dobson? The same Shorty Dobson they found floating in the Platte River? I never took no bet from Shorty. I don't know what you're talking about. That's odd. I did a little checking and that's not what Mr. Dobson's widow says. She says he came home all excited. Said he was going over to see you and collect. Only he never came home. Twenty grand that bet would have paid too. Pretty good motivation to punch his ticket. I tell you, I never took no bet from no shorty Dobson. Well, I wanted to see for myself. So I had an associate of mine drop by your office and borrow your books for that week while you were out. While he was there anyway, I had him look at all your books. The dummy set and the real ones. Afraid you're gonna have some tidying up to do when you get back. It took him a while to find them. Some pretty fuzzy math there, Mr. Monroe. You've been reporting less than half your earnings back to the bosses. When I relayed my findings back to Mr. Orsini, well, let's just say he wasn't tickled about it. May I present exhibit number one, Duke? Here's the entry, all right. Shorty Dobson, a grand on a 20 to one. What do you gotta say for yourself, Mort? You just can't break into my office and take shit? What about a, a search warrant or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> what, for mobsters, a warrant? Mr. Orsini thought there might be something rotten in Denmark. The balance sheets he's been getting from your operation lately have been a little murky. I told him I'd look into it. When I told him about my discoveries, well, let's just say he wasn't real happy. I'm afraid you're all through. And when I say all through, well, somebody else will be along to sort out the details with you shortly. How does he figure into it? A work for Aldo Lucia, not Alberto Orsini. <laughs> you are one dumb bastard, Mort. Everyone knows Delucia works for Alberto. I think I need to recuse myself about now. If I were you, I'd go home and get my house in order. You got more problems than petty revenge. Everyone knows what this is about. You ought to keep that niece of yours on a chain. Hey! Ah! Look, Gormy! Ellsworth! Ellsworth! God! Oh, God damn bastards! God! It looks like we're gonna have an opening on the west side. Something tells me Mr. Rossini has that taken care of too? In light of the tribulations Mr. Monroe has caused Messieurs Mann and Hines, he thought it only fair to let them try their hand at it. I come with the position, sir. Splendid. It's his money. Personally? I'd have qualms about either of them running a lemonade stand. Well, I guess that about wraps it up. And as Mr. Monroe pointed out, the Nuggets game is on. Court adjourned. We did it. West Side Kings, man. <laughs> Hell of a day. You're telling me. Mm -hmm. Spencer, look. It's that guy. What guy? The guy. That guy? Oh, that guy? Yeah. That guy's fucking here? How's he get away with that? I don't, what the fuck is he? Wait a minute. Oh, no, no that's, that's not that not guy. Him. Yeah. <sighs> hey, man. Hmm. I got something for you. What do you got? Oh shit. <laughs> Are you kidding?
<laughs> nice, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. I got something for you too. What? No yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. What do you got for me? What do you got I for me? I got something you didn't even know that you missed. So, the whole time? The whole time. <laughs> Come on. I wouldn't let you blow your own dick off. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah. Let's get out of here. Yeah. Not so fast, there, handsome. I save your ass, get you a sweet gig, and you're gonna reward me by running off without so much as a thank you? A thousand pardons, sir. Of course I'm forever in your debt. It's just, there's this girl, and you know... A girl, eh? So I'm being blown off for some floozy, am I? Oh, no, no, your em eminence. It's nothing like that. I mean, this isn't some fling we're talking about here. I mean, this is the real thing. Gaga over this chick. Tell me about her. I don't know where to begin. She's got it all. Brains, beauty, style. But, please, sir, whatever your wish is my command. Uh, if you hadn't intervened, you know. Whatever my well, wish, huh? You may have noticed me appreciating that posterior view you were displaying a moment ago. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I really don't roll like that. What? A moment ago, my slightest wish was your command, and now you're caviling? Well, it's just, you know... I... It's just what? You're either a man of your word or you're not. No, but you've got to understand... I... I've got to understand that you're not a man of your word? No, no, I am. I am. You am what, pray tell? Man of my word. Good. Then you'll meet me in room 314 of the Ramadan in two hours. We'll settle up then. And Lewis? Yeah? Wear something sexy. As I live and breathe, Twitch McGillicuddy in the flesh. We'd given you up for dead. Am I to assume that's my money in that satchel? I told you I could handle it. Any problems? Nope. Well, I'll be goddamned. Well, that's a given. So what happened in my absence? Anything interesting? God, it's you? Mm -hmm. But I, I don't understand. I'm so confused. So this whole time, yeah. oh, you saved us. Oh, thank God. For a moment there, I thought I was gonna have to, you know. Well, afraid you're not completely off the hook. There's a couple of things about my sexual preferences I left out of my internet profile. I am a woman like that. Oh, <laughs> I guess every relationship has its compromises. Look at you going on Dr. Phil on us. You know, I haven't seen any of the old herky-jerky since you've been back. What gives? I don't know. The doctor seems to think that something got rearranged in my head. <laughs> huh. So how's your pop? Strangest thing, I don't hear anything for a week. And this postcard comes from Maui.
Nice. San Francisco is cold. I hear you've taken over all of Mort Monroe's West Side action. What happened to that miserable fuck anyway? That, my boy, is something you'll want to lose interest in right away. If you want to stay healthy. It's like that, huh? Yep. You know, I saw an old flame of yours on the way over here. Yeah? Yeah, strangest thing. She was headed into Louisiana George's place. As long as she ain't bothering me. Well, she's not bothering you. And Mort's history. And you and Lewis are the West Side Kings now. Then why are you still so blue, man? Damned if I know. All right. Quick. Looks like you got a little hitch in your giddy up there, cowboy. Hey, shut up. 